Hey people, it is Monday, October the 31st. That's right, it is Halloween day. And it's currently 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's a somewhat mild and almost slightly muggy feeling 10 degrees Celsius. It's been on and off rain all day. Hopefully the rain will clear up though later this evening so the kids can go out and have fun trick-or-treating. So I'm on Bloor Street, just heading east now from the corner of Avenue Road. And I thought I'd take a walk along Bloor and make my way down to a cemetery in Cabbage Town that is the resting place of the namesake of Bloor Street, a man named Joseph Bloor. And this Joseph Bloor fellow founded the village of Yorkville, which is now the popular neighborhood known as Yorkville. And he was born in 1789 and died in 1862. And he was a, an innkeeper, a brewer, a land speculator. Originally from Staffordshire, England, who emigrated to Canada in 1819. And came here to what was then York, which later became Toronto. And the reason why I thought I'd take a walk to go visit his grave is because even though he seemed like a, an alright guy, there's no nasty stories about him that we know of yet. And Bloor Street, of course, is one of the most major streets in the city. So having a street of that stature named after him is no small feat. Bloor Street runs for like over 16 miles across Toronto and it goes beyond the borders of Toronto even. And the thing about this Joseph Bloor fellow is by no fault of his own <laughs> the photograph that he had taken of himself in the 19th century is probably one of the scariest looking portraits of a historical figure I've ever seen. So unfortunately, that means that Joseph Bloor has become a bit of a meme here in Toronto. One of the spookiest looking guys to ever have a street named after him. And being that it's Halloween, I thought, why not make that a theme and we'll take a walk along the street named after him. And we'll find his grave in the Necropolis Cemetery in Cabbage Town. So we're currently walking through the Mink Mile portion of Bloor. Of course, walking along the entire length of Bloor for this video would take hours. So I thought I'd start at probably the most well-known section of Bloor and make my way east into Cabbage Town. I'm not exactly sure where his grave is in the cemetery, so I might have to pause the video after I am in the cemetery and then look around a bit and then resume it after I have located his grave. Coming up to Bay and Bloor. So maybe I'll try switching over to the other side of the street so we can get more of a sense of Bloor Street on both sides. I'd like to see Joseph Bloor's reaction to what Bloor Street looks like now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bay and Bloor. And I do have my umbrella at the ready in case the rain starts coming down again. The Holt Renfrew, very upscale department store. And this tower under construction and the one across the street behind it are both called One Bloor. One is one blur east, one is one blur west. So not only does he have a street named after him, he has some of the tallest skyscrapers in the city named after him. Yeah, I think here they're redoing the podium of this office tower to incorporate a new retail store that will be taking up most of the base of that building. I think it'll be a flagship Lulumon store, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And probably not. And here we are at Young and Bloor. That guy's not happy. So I just cross over to the other side again. I think he's yelling at the cop across the street. So I'll continue on down to Parliament Street. We're on Bloor Street East now after crossing Young Street. Man, I haven't seen anybody in Halloween costume yet. I think a lot of people did their Halloween partying over the weekend. Monday is not exactly a big party night, Halloween or not. But we might see some early trick-or-treaters as I walk through Cabbage Town.
We got here. It wouldn't be a walk through downtown without some sort of disruption or sidewalk blockage. Crossing Church Street. Maybe I'll cross again back to the other side. So Bloor Street is often regarded as the most northerly major street running across downtown. A lot of people define the borders of downtown as having Bloor Street as its northern boundary. And then north of Bloor comes uptown. I would extend the northern boundary of downtown a bit further north though, maybe at least up past Davenport Road. And here's the Manulife headquarters. And St. Paul's Anglican Church. I don't think I've ever noticed this little statue here before. Head Rogers Way. This becomes Jarvis Street once you head a bit further south. We'll just cross to the other side again.
the Bloor Street comes to an end once you come to the Don Valley and then once you cross over the Bloor Viaduct which is also called the Prince Edward Viaduct then the street name changes and becomes Danforth Avenue so we're almost at the very eastern end of Bloor Street once we turn onto Parliament Street to head down towards Joseph Bloor's grave there won't be much left of Bloor Street beyond that point and here's a look down at Mount Pleasant Road that will take you up into Midtown We'll be walking past another cemetery on the way down to the necropolis, St. James Cemetery on Parliament Street. I might pop in just for a minute or so. And the necropolis cemetery is, I think, the oldest cemetery in the city. St. James is also one of the oldest, maybe next to necropolis. Is the headquarters of the National Post newspaper, Post Media. And I can smell burritos and Popeyes as I walk through here. Sherborne, so I'm going to cross back over to the other side again. Some nice autumn colors over there. That's the Rosedale neighborhood in that direction. I just recently did a walk through that neighborhood for one of my videos. One of the wealthiest neighborhoods in the city. Depending on how you measure such things, it's definitely in the top three. It comes in number one on many ratings or rankings. Sherborne subway station right here on the corner. Here's where Bloor Street suddenly quiets down quite a bit. At the Rosedale Valley across the street. So no development over there. 
And over here things become a bit more sparse on this side. And it kind of stays that way all the way up until you come to the Bloor Viaduct. It's very leafy and a bit sleepy on this very extreme eastern end. And this construction has been ongoing here for a very long time. This is a neat little spot here. This will take you up into the St. Jamestown neighborhood. And there's another entrance to Sherborne subway station right down there. That's Glen Road. I also did a video recently walking around there. Here's a recently completed development here, Via Bloor, another place named after Joseph. <laughs> Future retail space will hopefully fill up for too long. Add a little bit of life to this end of the street here. And up ahead is Parliament Street. There's the Rosedale Valley again. And the street sort of veers over at this point to approach the Don Valley and the Prince Edward Viaduct. That's the end of Bloor Street just up there. The eastern end, anyway. And I think I'm going to make this awkward crossing here to get to the other side of Parliament Street. And just by sheer luck, the light turned green for me. Usually you have to wait there for what seems like an inordinate amount of time. So we'll say goodbye to Bloor Street. And now we're going to go look for the grave of the man the street was named after. Make our way south down Parliament Street. 
St. Jamestown neighborhood on the right. And St. James Cemetery here on the left. And the rain is holding off pretty good. So I'm happy about that. It'll just make walking through the cemetery later a little less fun because the leaves won't be as crunchy sounding. They're all soggy. Looks like they had to reinforce this. I think people would squeeze through that opening there. I'm not sure why. Or another spot here actually where you can probably squeeze through. Because I guess people like to come into the cemetery after it's closed for the evening and wander around and do spooky things. Most of these cemeteries closed around 6 p.m. And the front gate is locked up. That happened to me the other night when I wanted to go into the necropolis during my live stream. It was a bit too late and it was all locked up. That's why I'm doing this video in the daytime instead of in the evening when it would have been maybe a little more spooky. Because I want to be able to actually get into the cemetery I think you can find graves in these cemeteries going back 200 years. These being some of the oldest cemeteries. We'll just take a quick little peek in here. The main event will be the necropolis. I've just never actually come into the St. James Cemetery before. I'm just wondering if there's a way where I can walk through the cemetery and then make my way into Cabbage Town at an exit at some point, but I don't think there is. Just look at a few graves and then I will head down to the necropolis. Here we have Simpson. Let's look at the dates on these ones. I can't really read it. Eighteen ninety five is when George Simpson died, age sixty nine years. Well, 
You get the idea. Let's head down to the other cemetery now. I don't want this video to be too overly long. Try to keep it under an hour. There'll be plenty of graves to look at <laughs> in the necropolis. Alright, so here's Wellesley Street East, so I'm going to head east here into the old Cabbage Town neighborhood. I recently did a pretty thorough walk through old Cabbage Town with Johnny Strides and Action Kid. As part of our ultra collab, three-way collab, we did a whole bunch of videos in that manner. One for each of our channels. So if you're interested in seeing more of Cabbage Town, by all means check out that video. You'll find it in my collabs playlist. And this is one of the most popular neighborhoods in the city for trick-or-treating. As I mentioned earlier, I was in the neighborhood during my live stream on this past Saturday, and we found quite a few pretty awesome Halloween displays. It all looks a bit spooky right at night, of course. You can see across the street, we have a skeleton on a chair just lounging and relaxing. I'll try to spot as many displays as I can as we make our way to the cemetery. Well, definitely too early for trick-or-treaters. Ghost hiding in the trees over here.
You can appreciate that. At least they have something. Even just a nicely placed scary jack-o'-lantern is really all you need sometimes. Well, this house really went all out. Fright this way. <laughs> Not sure what's so scary about that guy. <laughs> but the rest of it is pretty good. Ooh, lots of spiders. I know my mom would not enjoy this display. She has quite the spider phobia. ornaments. There's another good effort. So Wellesley Street ends up ahead there at a park. And Sumac Street will take us south to the necropolis. And it's neat to see the leaves just falling down all around. One just Almost hit me in the face. <laughs> Let's see if one can land directly on the lens. Oh, almost. <laughs> I'll see if I can make that happen. Oh, I almost missed this display over here. So busy trying to look at leaves. That's a neat one. Oh, for a second there, I thought there was a person there, but it's just a an animatronic <laughs> figure. I guess animatronic is a bit much. <laughs> its head moves back and forth. Here is the necropolis. I'm not sure if there's an entrance on this side. I know there is on the other side. So I think I have to walk around. Here's this one again. I see this one 
almost every Halloween, at least the last few Halloweens that I've been doing videos. This very tall, scary guy here. There's even a skeleton of a dog over there. I think the coolest display I saw was Saturday night during the live stream on another street here in the neighborhood. Had a very tall, scary looking skeleton in the yard with glowing eyes and the adjoining house, it was a semi-detached house, also had a matching tall skeleton on their lawn as well. So they kind of went all in there and decided to really bring their front yards <laughs> up in the best Halloween style possible. And Riverdale Farm is across the street, and Riverdale Park West. Riverdale Farm is just like a little, almost like a petting zoo type place. With mostly farm type animals. Toronto Necropolis Chapel. Designed by architect Henry Langley in 1872. So, okay, Joseph Bloor, we're almost upon you. The scariest looking man to ever have a Major street named after him in a major city, maybe. So 1850 is, I think, how far back this cemetery goes. Any ghosts hanging out in the neighborhood? Come out and say hi while I'm here. Maybe we'll find some proof of the spirit world on a YouTube video. I would love that. By all means, come and say hi, ghosts. Especially Joseph Bloor, if you're listening. So speaking of that, I am going to, I think, pause the video. And I'm going to try to find his grave. I think it's one of the ones that are just set into the ground like this and not a not a gravestone such as these. So I'll be back once I found Mr. Joseph Bloor on Halloween here at the Necropolis.
Well, for the life of me, I cannot find Joseph Bloor's grave. I have been walking around for over a half an hour here. Crisscrossing, covering as much ground as I possibly could, looking at every single grave that's set directly into the ground, such as this kind of thing. And I have not found him. Why are you hiding from us, Joseph Bloor? So I might have to just find a picture of his grave and just, ugh, I just stepped in mud <laughs> and just sort of edit it in to the end of the video. We could imagine this is the grave of Joseph Bloor. <laughs> or perhaps this one. Quite a disappointing end to a fun walk. You have a map of historical figures and where they're located in Toronto cemeteries. I have a big flag saying Joseph Bloor lies here. So I guess I'm going to start to wrap up the video. Hope you enjoyed the walk though along Bloor Street starting at Avenue Road and heading east all the way to Parliament Street as we talked a bit about Joseph Bloor, the man after whom Bloor Street is named, the scariest looking man, perhaps, to have a major street named after him. <laughs> Although he seemed like a good guy, it's not his fault. Photography in the 19th century was not up to current levels in capturing how good looking a person could be, <laughs> or not. So leave a comment below. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also make sure you hit that notification bell, that way you won't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal, as well as via my merch store. And the recently enabled Super Thanks button is also right down below. And you can also find me on Instagram under KContinuum. So thanks for watching, and be sure to keep checking back because, as always, I will continue, and have a happy Halloween. Come and get me, Joseph Bloor. This is your last chance. <laughs>